So, welcome back to my channel. I have had a very long break because I had a very, very busy couple of months getting rid of Christmas and all that stuff. I had a lot of orders, but have no fear because I have so many scroller boxes to open. So today we're gonna unbox uh, at least October's because, oh man, so long ago. Let me actually, I know what this is. Um, like I said, I had two of the boxes spoiled for me because obviously I'm behind, so it's my fault, but it's totally okay. Um, this one I'm really excited about because if you're not a fan of drawing with waffles, you really need to check her out because she's amazing. And this is actually her box. Look at that pretty, pretty sparkly looking sticker. I love it already. And, um, ooh, violets. So when I was a kid, my grandma used to get these violet candies. Um, they were little, these, these little squares, and they taste like soap. They're so disgusting, but, oh, cool. I forgot about this. Um, it's a scroller box a pin for the 50th box. That's pretty cool. I have a wall of um, pins. I'm definitely going to put this on. We have a Derwent paint pen in white, 0.5. Um, we have a pencil, Faber-Castell HB. And then the Fils de Resistance. Ooh, a kneaded eraser. Alira a kneaded eraser, of course. That is her favorite, so it makes sense. And I love it comes in this little case. I'm gonna try to like keep mine super nice so it keeps fitting in this case. Um, and then we actually have a Copic set, which is really exciting. Copics are awesome. They're like my favorite markers to use. And I actually don't use these. I use the sketch markers. I imagine they work exactly the same, so it's kind of it's going to be kind of different for me, but I'm excited. Um, I know one is a liner, and they come in kind of an array of purples. Um, they gave us some paper as well. Oh, it's nice and thick, actually. It's like a blending card almost. And then, of course, this is um, Rin's beautiful piece um, and it was really cool on her channel she actually showed her original and then she almost recreated it it was really cool you should definitely head over to her channel and check it out um, drawing with waffles uh, definitely check her out I will link her in the description and then this month's prompt is dressed to the nines so I guess uh, let's get started So as I got started, I swatched my colors and what I realized is when you're given a very limited palette, it is a little harder to, um, well, at least for me, to kind of figure what's going to go where, but I did the best that I could and I wasn't 100% happy with the outcome, but I think um, for feeling kind of, I have to get this out there, I, I ordered these, I have to do it, um, I think it came out pretty good. Uh, I definitely sketched a little bit on the papers they gave me, but then I realized I wanted a little more freedom, so I opened up my sketchbook and did a couple little doodles um, and kind of fell in love with something. I had actually done a first draft, and I hated it, and I'm not even going to show it to you because it's just awful. Um, but I definitely wanted like an old-timey feel and, uh, and a huge hat. I don't know why I was <laughs> obsessed with having a huge hat on this lady. So... I also strayed away from using the regular pencil that came in the box and I decided to use this purple pencil because I just thought it was very fitting with the color scheme of the box. So um, I sketched it out on the paper and you know when I went to do the line art I'm so used to using black so I kind of felt a little uneasy because I thought oh this isn't really working out the way I want it to but again it's one of those things everything is about just trying something new and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Um, I don't particularly love this color for a liner, but it's it's nice. I just think I'm not used to it yet. So with that being said, um, again, I made the best out of it. And I tried to utilize the, the line art, but also add a little bit of shading with it because I felt like I'm relying on literally two colors aside from that really pretty pink jelly marker. Um, and I was nervous that I wouldn't have enough definition and tone. But the good thing about Copics is you can overlay them and overlay them and, and you will get darker areas and um, that's something nice that comes up a little bit later. I'm also not used to leaving skin tone as white which was also really hard for me so I just tried to put in my base shadows figure out where things were gonna go and then kind of hope for the best. 
One of the things I notice I do is I'm constantly comparing myself to other artists. And especially because I admire Drawing With Waffles, I was sitting here thinking, man, this illustration has to be amazing, um, especially because it's a box for my Drawing With Waffles. But what I realized is I'm putting way too much pressure on myself and that's not as important as actually enjoying, enjoying the experience, drawing, <laughs> enjoying the experience and trying something new. So it's totally okay to look up to people and admire them. But remember, as a young artist, you want to try to find your own way and don't compare yourself to others because it just makes more sense to go into it, find your voice, and enjoy what you're doing. Otherwise, it's a chore. And then who wants to do that? So one of the things I'm gonna to try to do this year, since I'm not as well versed in using limited color palettes, I wanna to try to do more of them. And one of the options is using Jazza's Arty Games. He's got um, a really cool feature where you can plug in all the Copic markers you have, and then it brings up like maybe three random colors and you have to try to use this limited palette. So I think it's a great way um, to kind of expand things that you already know about art and design. Um, I definitely think it's harder when you're using like three of almost the same color, but, but it was a good challenge and it was fun. I enjoyed it. So I guess moving on to the next box and I'll see you back at the drawing board.